Welcome to our blockchains and Bitcoin work. Okay, so uh, this is talk essentially started when the WannaCry uh, virus uh, started its ransomware attack, and they essentially asked for uh, rewards on Bitcoins. I never used Bitcoins before, so I just wanted to see how, how it works, not how to buy them, but essentially the technology behind it. Okay. And uh, after some talks with the guys here and so on, the idea came up to, to make a call on that after checking things for myself. So, because not everyone might, in this audience probably everybody or almost everybody knows about uh, cryptography, but some people might not, so yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's do an overview on it. Uh, I'll probably go a bit fast, but if you have any doubts or something, interrupt me, okay? After that, we'll talk about blockchains, is the base technology for Bitcoin, and after that, we'll talk about Bitcoins and their implementation. So, we're going to talk about symmetric cryptography, public key cryptography, and hash functions. Okay. So, symmetric cryptography. Essentially, we encrypt and decrypt the, the data, the payloads, using the same key. This has the drawback of needing to share a key before starting to encrypt stuff. And if you just send the key in the network, uh, it will be essentially the same as not having anything encrypted because the attacker can just eavesdrop the, the key. Okay, these algorithms are extremely fast compared to the next one, the public key encryption around 10,000 times more uh, or faster. They are less secure due to the speed for brute force attacks and also because they usually use smaller keys. And this was the only available type of encryption in until the 1970s. Okay. Examples like Dash, Triple Dash, Lowfish, AES, and so on. Okay. So public cryptography, so or asymmetric cryptography as opposed to the symmetric one, encrypts using one key and decrypts using an opposed key. Okay, so the keys are related. Both private and public keys are generated at the same time. We have the RSA in our laptops as well. So one key is the inverse of the other. The public key can be available to the entire world. We just broadcast it. And the strength of the algorithm relies on the fact that by knowing the public key, it's extremely hard to guess the private key. So it's extremely slow compared to the uh, symmetric cryptography, more secure due to lack of speeds and usually much bigger keys. It's common today use um, 2,000 bits or something as, as, as the keys for this, 2048. First algorithms were discovered in the 1970s and RSA is by far the most used algorithm on this. Sorry? Symmetric man, if you're true. Extremely slow compared to public key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Change that. Okay, so it guarantees confidentiality. Kasha was talking about that uh, previously. So data is encrypted with the public key and consequently can only be decrypted with the private key. Only the holder of the private key will be able to decrypt the original message. And integrity will be also guaranteed because any small change on the encrypted data will return a completely useless um, uh, payload after the, the decryption. And authentication is essentially the reverse operation. So someone can uh, encrypt with the public uh, with the private key and decrypt with the public uh, with the public key. So essentially, we are signing. The, the contents of that payload, because only the the, the signer, um, only the older of the private key, will be able to. Yes. Okay. If you encrypt with the public with the private key, you can sign. essentially encrypt. It's just a signature. Yeah, the signature is essentially encrypted with the private with the private key, and you encrypt with the with the public key. Okay. So integrity is also maintained by the exact same reason. Okay. So uh, in modern day communication, 
because the, the, the public key cryptography is a lot slower, what is usually done is that a secret shared key is usually generated. Uh, for example, um, all the SSL protocols and so on use this. The data is transmitted using the symmetric um, shared key and psychically, after a period of time, new keys will be generated and exchanged using the public key infrastructure. Okay. So for an attacker to be able to get the access to all the data, it will need to essentially get the private key or to get or to crack all the share of keys. Okay. okay, hash functions, they just essentially produce a message digest with always the same size according to the algorithm present. For example, uh, we're going to talk about SAH 256, 256 bits, always a 256 bits output of the of that. And so uh, the smallest change on, on the payload will generate a completely different hash result. Okay, so that's essentially how, 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 how it works. So uh, it's extremely difficult to produce one payload. Let's imagine that I have a file and I just add a space there. Okay. And just by adding a space anywhere in the documents, the, the, the hash result will be a completely different hash result without the space. Okay. So I give uh, two examples. So an hello world and an hello world with a space. And you can see that the hash are completely different. So uh, this is also used, uh, let me see. Usually people uh, sign uh, documents by producing an hash and just signing with a public key or the, with a private key, uh, with the public key infrastructure. <laughs> they, use the, um, they use the private key to sign the hash and people will just say, okay, this hash is the hash of this document and it's very hard to produce another document that it's valid and produces the same hash. So I know it was you that produced the, uh, or you that signed the, the, that document. So with this in mind, essentially, these are the technologies that will be used in blockchains and in Bitcoin. Okay. So what is what, what are blocks? What is a block? This block ID, uh, some um, space for data, for contents, uh, a previous link, and this will be very clear uh, in the next slides. So it's essentially a link for the previous block, but not for the ID, but for the hash of the previous block. Okay, we have an ounce, and essentially it's um, a value so that the the hash of the the block uh, follows a specific rule, and this will also be the base of Bitcoin. Okay, and of course we have the hash, and the hash includes the block ID, the data, the previous, and the nonce. So the, the ash of the previous block will be part of the entire payload. And this will give us a lot of benefits. So what do we have? So we can see that when we have a blockchain, okay, essentially it's the previous fields will have the same value as the ash of the previous block. Essentially it's this. It's as simple as this. This is the blockchain. Okay? So this implies that we have a change from the last one up until the first one. So in Bitcoins we will have a link, or we can follow links from the last block until the first block ever. Okay. And um, the nonce, this value here, makes the block calculation to take some time. And this will be important as well to guarantee the distribution uh, of, 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 the, of the transactions throughout the network. So, if, uh, if the hash needs to follow a specific rule, yeah. So, um, if I want a, a particular pattern, pattern for the hash, I need to use the nonce and I need to calculate the nonce, for example, let's say, I need to use one and two and three and four and then, hey, I have one, I calculated with it with the 1000 value and, oh, okay, it follows the rule, so I found it. And that's basically mining. Okay, so we are essentially trying to calculate an ounce where the complete block uh, has an ash and that ash follow a particular rule. Okay, so let's imagine that I want a rule where the first um, four characters of the, of the produced ash are zeros. 
Okay. I need to try every nonce until I get four zeros at the beginning of the hash. Okay. That's money. Okay. Simple as that. Who defines the rule? Uh, in bitcoins, uh, they are already defined. Okay. Okay. Let's I will talk a bit. Every time it's it's uh, it's not the yeah. Uh, I'll go there. <laughs> okay. So, what's the properties of this? If someone changes the content of one block, let's say I uh, change the the data here, but it could be the block ID or the previous or whatever. But if I change the data of this, if I have a bunch of transactions here in the data, if I change this, what will happen is that the hash will be different. We will not follow the the rule. So I need to calculate a new nonce, and so. From this block forwards, all of the blocks will be become invalid, and they have to be reminded. Okay, so it, it, that's how uh, the blockchain resists uh, alterations. It's essentially by having this chain, and the the ashes are linked, and so if you change one, you change everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this. So, when you get this distributed, because we want to get this distributed, right? So, let's imagine that we have three nodes, and all the three nodes have the exact same um, chain in there. So, all the nodes in the network will have the complete history of the chain. Okay. <coughs> so, if you want to check if they all share the same uh, block four, for example, okay, you just need to check the hash for block 4 and if, if this hash is the same we can guarantee that all the previous blocks are exactly the same for them because this hash is dependent on the leak for the previous one and so on so that it will be completely different uh, like we are going to see so if an attacker comes here and changes this block okay, this hash will be different which will affect this one and will affect this one so meaning just by comparing block 4 we can see that something went wrong here okay. okay and just one more thing and because in this case we have a majority node 1 and node 3 agree that hash 4 it's the it's the correct one so they they win okay. so that's everything that you need to know about Blockchains, quite easy, right? Okay, so Bitcoin. Essentially, Bitcoin is a ledger. What is a ledger? Essentially, it's a, a list of transactions. It's not uh, the payload does not contain. Okay, this guy Alice has one hundred dollars, and uh, Bob has one hundred and thirty dollars, and so on. Nothing like that. It just contains a list of transactions. Okay, so. So, uh, each computer in the Bitcoin network contains a copy of the chain since the first block. So, like I said, everybody knows the complete history since the beginning of time for Bitcoin. Everybody knows about all the transactions ever made by anyone. Okay, so, there's n anyone, not anyone can, can hide uh, some transactions and so on. They are known to anyone. And so, this was designed so that, that no trust is needed. Okay. You don't need to trust anyone for the system to work. And essentially, nodes receive transaction requests. So when you want to make a uh, transaction to someone, you just forward it, and all the nodes in a distributed fashion will forward that information to all the nodes in the network. Okay. Relies on public key cryptography. So that's why the introduction. Public keys are essentially sent to addresses or the outputs in transactions. So when you're saying that I want to send uh, $10 to John, I'm saying I'm just saying $10 to the public key of John. I don't need to know anything more about John than to his public key. Okay? And you prove that you own the money by signing your private key and an unspent transaction that was sent to you. So we are going to see this, but because you don't have a balance, you cannot say that, uh, okay, I have $1,000, I want to send $10 to this guy, I have enough money so I can do it. 
So what we have is a link of transactions. And so we, you need to point to transactions that were sent to you and that are marked as unspent. Okay, this will be a bit clearer. Okay. So uh, because you have to sign that and to say, okay, I authorize this amount of money with this previous transactions to be used in the, this new transaction, okay, and you sign that, that cannot be reused any, in any other circumstance. So it's, it's, um, it's um, uh, tolerant to uh, double spending attacks. Okay. So, what is a transaction? So, let's imagine that Alice wants to send uh, five dollars to Bob. Okay. So, it's creating transaction 20, 102. Just as simple as that. And it gives as inputs for that transaction two other transactions. You can see that those transactions were directed to Alice. Okay, let's see. Alice has three dollars from here and two and a half dollars from there. Okay, so it's five and a half dollars. Okay, so uh, what it, it does is that it creates uh, the five dollar transaction to Bob, and it creates an, uh, another output for R of zero dot five. Okay, so it doesn't lose money, and this is how Bitcoin tracks all the money. So. In the future, when she wants to use this money that was remaining, she can use it because she has a transaction that was not spent. These transactions will be marked as spent, so they will not be able to be reused again. Okay? Clear? <laughs> if it's not, tell me. Yeah? So essentially, it's this. That's why we can have multiple inputs because you can aggregate multiple in uh, multiple transactions to have enough money to make one transaction, and that's why usually there are more than one outputs. How do you relate that to blockchain? Okay, wait. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see this. This feels. Yeah. So this creates a chain of transactions, not a blockchain. Okay up to the beginning of time because there must be a, a first block where the money starts to be generated and not uh, but I'll, I'll talk more about that okay so transactions when you install the Bitcoin wallet in your machine it will just take up to 24 hours to check every single transaction <laughs> ever made okay so if you wait more time you probably will take more time because more transactions will be made uh, there. So uh, uh, you said it will uh, inspect all the transactions ever made? Ever made. From where? You from essentially downloads all the transactions from other nodes. Okay. Okay, and then you you check them by yourself. Because, because the other... Because your node will need to, to validate the third transaction because it will be distributed. So okay. You can the algorithm probably checks with multiple nodes and so on. It's about 12 gigas or 15 gigas? Uh, no, it's more. I never installed it. <laughs> 500 g gigabytes, I think, the last time I checked. So, but if you install a wallet, you don't have to, to download uh, all, the, all, the, all the blockchain. But Only if, if you want to be a, a full yeah. node on the network. Yeah, probably. If yeah. you want to mine. <coughs> if you yeah. want to mine. Yeah, yeah because you, you can trust, or you can trust the, the chain that you were given to you, you know that you don't have money, or you just start saying, okay, mm -hmm. I have, I inserted money here, I bought money here, so I have this transaction, you start there, from there. But if you want to be sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah but. So once the transaction is used, it's marked as spent. Uh, so to prevent double spending, when checking a transaction, no check if it wasn't already spent, obviously. And there is an index of unspent transactions to speed up this process. Okay. All the, so as we have seen here, this will be marked as pants, they will be removed from that list, and that one will be created there. Those two will be there. Okay, so uh, in theory, we will need to check our balance, go through every transaction ever made. Of course, we know where we started, so it's, it's not that hard, but um, we don't have a, a balance in the, in the Bitcoin, so we need to go throughout the chain, transaction chain, uh, 
up to a point where we start it. If you download the whole transaction chain, like 500 gigs or whatever, obviously that's changing like literally every probably a couple of milliseconds. 10 so, minutes. Okay. Sorry? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So is there a delta then for updating that or do you have to download the whole thing again every time if you want an updated list of all the transactions? If you are a full node, you'll be participating. participating on that. If you are not, you'll probably need to download. Okay, so a reminder that uh, there are lost bitcoins and it's possible to lose quite easily bitcoins. So user mistakes can result in permanent loss, like if a user loses his private key, bye-bye money, bye-bye <laughs> bitcoins. Okay? And there is no form of appeal, so we don't have banks, so we don't have a clerk, so we can say, oh, yeah, I lost my money, can you please give me it back? Nope, there is no way for doing that. And those bitcoins are lost from the entire Bitcoin economy because no one will have that private key, so no one will be able to spend that money or transact or whatever. Okay. And also about, especially for us guys, developers, and um, over 260 bitcoins were lost due to a malformed address. So there was a bug in the software and a lot of bitcoins were, were lost. So. People can write their own software to participate in the network, but yeah, be careful. <laughs> be careful. Okay, so anonymity. If you access a Bitcoin through an anonymizing network that hides your IP address, uh, you only need to reveal your public key. Okay, you can generate public key for every incoming transaction, so you don't need to have only one key. So in theory, you could try to be as anonymous as possible. Okay. The question is that uh, usually, like we have seen here, people tend to group inputs so that uh, they can produce another transaction. And for doing so, we need to say, okay, I have this input, and it's not here, but uh, you have uh, you sign the transaction with the private key for the input. So you can say that in one transaction, I have. Uh, this one is for using my private key one and or my um, yeah private key one and this one is using my private key two but I group them together so it's possible for someone to go and check okay if this guy had this key and this key this is the same person okay mm -hmm. so there are some ways uh, of course, the, the key pairs can be generated offline, and so it's it's really hard to 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 find who someone up until you get the money <laughs> out of the network. There, uh, if you have, if, for example, if banks start using this, you can say, okay, this guy changed this money from this private key into this account with for a real person, and that will break an enemy. Right? Transaction or the challenges. So this was probably the, the thing that got me most interested to potentially know how they handle the transaction agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay, or <coughs> and so transactions are passed note by note, and there is no guarantee on the order which they are sent in which they are received. So like IP packets in, in the network. Timestamps can be easily forged, so we cannot rely on timestamps. So let's imagine a scenario where Alice creates a transaction to Bob. Alice is always the bad guy here. <laughs> Bob will ship the products to, to Alice. Alice will forge a transaction to herself with the same inputs as the transaction to Bob. So I'm just saying, so I'm saying output to Bob, but then she will create a new transaction like this with the exact same inputs and just Alice 5.5, .5, okay? And removing Bob from here. Uh, sorry, oh, can she do that from those transactions? Yeah, but, and spend. but they have to be agreed on the network. So you are, oh, yeah. she did this on her machine. So let, let's, this is hard and we will be clear why, but let's imagine that she creates this transaction, sends to Bob, Bob sees this and says, hey, uh, I'm going to send you the goods immediately. Okay? Yeah. And uh, immediately after that, she creates a new one, okay? And she is able to get all the other nodes fa faster than the, the computer of both. Okay. For instance, you, there are some ways that you can pay 
to, to get your, your block to be uh, mined faster than, mm -hmm. than another block. So in that case, you could forge that second transaction and, and ask and pay a fee to, to get that block uh, processed yeah, faster. Yeah, let's go there, but yeah, it's, it's, it can be related. Okay, okay, so yeah. Where is Alice? Yeah, in the last transaction. Okay, so if the last transaction, the forge one, is the one that's going to be accepted, and we are going through the algorithm to, to, to see that, Bob well, will not receive the money because the first one will be marked as uh, as forged, and the, the 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 goods were already shipped to Alice. So Alice will have the money and the goods. Okay. So. Transaction order. <coughs> Transactions are placed in groups created uh, called creating blocks. So here is where the blockchain enters. Okay. So we have a list of transactions, and those transactions enter in the block. Okay. So um, the transactions in the same block are considered to have happened at the same time. Okay. So the time is given by the blocks. So we have a completely fixed sequence of blocks and essentially that's time okay. and transactions are not yet block that are not yet uh, in the block are called unconfirmed or unordered so there is a pool of transactions that were not uh, already included in a valid block and so people are just waiting for for them to, to to enter there so that they can be validated so when we create uh, when I was saying, for example, myself, I want to send uh, money to, to Ryan, I create uh, a transaction, and that transaction will be unconfirmed, and it's going to wait to enter a block, and when the block is final, the transaction is confirmed. So, so uh, anyone can create a block with a particular set of transactions, so no one has to agree on what transactions will be included in the next block. I can create one block with a given transaction that I know, some other guy can create with some other transactions, and everybody will propose their blocks. And because multiple people will have different proposals at the same time, there should be an agreement mechanism. So to where, what will be the next block in the chain? So the solution is announced, the thing that takes time to calculate. Okay? So on average, the entire narrative will take 10 minutes to find the nouns. And the nouns, it's what's the final piece for us to have a block, right? So um, the computing power needed for a single computer will just be years. Okay, that's why we, this is just relying on the entire network to, to find that. The person to mine the block will broadcast the block, and this block will be accepted as the next block in the chain. The probability of people finding the nouns at the same time or in the time where the data is not distributed among all the computers, it's very low, but it can happen. Okay, so why 10 minutes? Shorter, shorter times lead to instability, okay? And higher times delay confirmations. Just trial and error, okay? Every two weeks, the Bitcoin software changes the rule for the nonce so that it becomes harder to solve to cope with computer power increase. So they are always trying to get it on average on 10 minutes to calculate the rules. So the rules are changing. Okay, so let's see with some pictures. Oh. So let's imagine that we have three nodes and they all agree on the white transactions. But then some nodes, might not be node one, two, or three, they receive two different uh, trans proposal, uh, proposals for the next block. Okay. They received at the same time. There was a case where people were able to find nonces at the same time, and they are different. Okay. Mm -hmm. A tie is broken when the next block is calculated. So when we have multiple uh, branches, essentially a race is on, and the the first uh, branch to have. Uh, the next block will win. Of course, we can have, for example, all these branches could for also calculate essentially at the same time the next block. So let's go to the next one and to the next one. There will be a point in time where one of the branches will win. It will be bigger than the other one, uh, than the other branches, and so the other branches will be discarded. Okay, and 
all the, the longest branch always wins. Okay, so what we get from here is that we add the green, the blue, and the red. Okay, and of course the red always wins. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> and so that was not my chance. <laughs> Then transactions in the drop blocks return to unconfirmed states and wait to enter the block. That's the issue. So in that case, Bob could have since, um, checked for, okay, I have um, my transaction was confirmed. Okay, I have a block with, uh, with that transaction, it's calculated, but there were, Alice might have created this one. Okay, so what will happen? The other, the blue one will be discarded and the, the red one will be the true block. Okay, and so uh, all the other transactions will be lost, or they will return to an un unconfirmed state, mm -hmm. and they need to wait to enter to an another valid block. So the problem, uh, yeah. So let's see an example I was talking about. Bob waits <coughs> for the transaction to be confirmed. Bob sends the products to Alice. Alice creates a concurrent longer branch and wins. First, this is uh, Alice must win a race against the rest of the network to do this. So, if Alice was just one person trying to defeat the entire Bitcoin network, that would be extremely hard for her. Okay. And um, she will need 50% of the entire computing power to have a 50% chance. Of course, if someone gets close to this, that will become problematic, and we'll see. Um, and as a consequence, transactions back, uh, far back in the chain are more secure. Okay. So we can see that it's extremely hard for someone, if all the nodes in the network agree on this one, if someone comes back and tries to change this, everybody will say, hey, forget it. Okay. At the point where our multiple nodes uh, try to agree on a set of, of, uh, of blocks, that's when the problem occurs. Okay. And occurs by when they select one, okay? But this can take a bit of time. Uh, sorry, yeah. So yeah, so it is recommended to wait several blocks until assuming a transaction is final. Okay, we'll see how many. So people usually um, group together in mining pools. Everybody heard about that. Um, for many, it's a steady income of revenues. We have rewards and or fees on the Bitcoin network. And some pools uh, have more than 20% of the total computing power on the network. That's the problem because with 20% power, BTC Guild solves six blocks in a row by itself. Okay. <laughs> so if they were trying to do something uh, fraudulent with it, that will be a problem because they will be able to rewrite the history as they see fit. Okay. At least six blocks of it. Yeah, and six blocks is it's a lot. It's a lot. So uh, they voluntarily limited his members so that they don't get more computing power so that people remain trusting in the Bitcoin network. If they start continue to increase, people probably will start losing um, faith <laughs> on, on Bitcoin. Okay, so they limited themselves. And it is recommended to wait more than six blocks to assume a transaction is final because BTC builds were able to get six. So on average, each block takes 10 minutes. So after one hour, one hour and a half, a block can be assumed, assumed final. So how do Bitcoins are generated? A reward is given to who solves a block. So every block, block that is uh, mined, it gives a reward to the person that, hey, I found the block, okay? Um, and this is exactly why block solving is called mining. Okay. Every four years the reward is cut in half. So the last Bitcoin will be mined in 2140. <laughs> okay. And this year, total possible Bitcoins are 21 million, but like we discussed yesterday, you can send up to these Bitcoins in a transaction. So there will probably be enough money for everybody if this becomes a currency, of course, the people that have unit bitcoins, like one bitcoin, two bitcoins, will be rich. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
So transaction fees, uh, when this all stops, <laughs> or when the rewards become very, very small, um, people will just turn off their computers and everything will stop working unless they return the incentives to mining uh, with fees. So every transaction can also include a fee to the person that's going to mine it. Okay, and money, um, mining is in reality is a process of transactions. Transactions with fees will probably be processed faster, like we discussed. So if you pay, hopefully fees will be lower compared to other payment systems. Okay, because Bitcoin will be competing with Visa and Mastercard and whatever and hopefully it will be. So, last slide, uh, Bitcoin final considerations. Uh, used for illegal activities, the want to cry example, asking not for money, but for Bitcoins. Okay. Um, yeah. So people that want to do legal stuff and so on, can, be, uh, can use Bitcoins to receive the payments without being, or being extremely hard to find them. Right. So mining take, uh, uses a huge amount of energy. I think the current uh, mining energy being spent right now is enough for powering Ireland. So, yeah. Specialized hardware is being created for mining. So GPUs are extremely well suited for mining. Both NB and AMD and NVIDIA are working on special hardware, tune hardware, so they are working on GPUs that they sell currently without a lot of bells and whistles with different warranties because GPUs will be 24-7 and specific drivers for those and so on. And there have been shortages of GPUs. Some GPUs models are extremely hard to find in the market because the miners get them all. Okay. For example, if you try to get the AMD RX 580, it's almost impossible because the miners get them all. Yeah. So, um, the main sources of information using this talk, uh, most guys here probably will know this link, explains very well the blockchain, was based on this. I also liked this, this YouTube video that explains how Bitcoin's work, essentially this is based on that. And I just want to show Fudzilla, Fudzilla it's a site that I see every day for I don't know how many years, about hardware and hardware news. and. Cur the last few months, they have been talking about cryptocurrency and NVIDIA and AMD and all the stuff, so I can show you a bit of that. Just I made a small search, <coughs> and you can see that all, all the news, for example, uh, share search, so even the shares of companies like AMD or NVIDIA are increasing because miners are buying them like crazy. Next generation cars will be special version for miners, and so on. So you can see that <laughs> even special hardware for that. And that's it. <laughs>